On my walk today, I heard the words of the poet Wall Stevens ring through my ears. The poet is the priest of the invisible. Hey everyone, it's Paul, and this is Contemplify, where we seek to kindle the examined life for contemplatives in the world. Contemplify is a podcast that's been around for a few years now and has embodied the independent spirit and has grown in ways that I never thought possible. Thanks to those of you willing to pass this on to kindred spirits and also rating it and reviewing it on Apple Podcasts. Thanks to all who have done so. So growing up, I never heard the words of Wall Stevens, that the poet is the priest of the invisible. Had I, I might have had a different way of looking at poetry in my earlier years. I thought it was just kind of a banal and delusional literary expression that, of course, had to rhyme. My view of poets and poetry was that it was typically only understood by scholars and ivory towers who had not much to do between resting on their daybed and reaching for books on high shelves. That poor image of poetry and poets was relieved from its duty uh, when I was in college, thanks to the likes of Wendell Berry, Mary Oliver, and Gary Snyder. Their poems made me come alive in a way that I had not found in other poetry. And to learn about their lives, to know that they were not sitting, that they were not sitting on their keisters waiting to dissect the next poem, but they were living a life with poetic rhythms within it. Since that discovery, I've been looking for other poets who speak to this mystery, who speak to this truth of not only being a literary expression, but can also be breathed into by a poet with a well-lived life. I've discovered many vibrant voices of today's poets, those walking the planet with us right now. Part of my hope here at Contemplify is that these introductions to poets or to poetry might bring you to bring a collection of poetry to the tavern, to raise a glass and read a poem with your friends, or perhaps copy a poem down and send it to a friend across the country. Or who knows, maybe jot a few verses down when inspiration strikes you. This series will introduce you to two poets who helped me circle the mystery, Chris Dombrowski and Jericho Brown. My hope is that through these conversations, you'll get a taste of poetry as a contemplative gateway. Poetry has played that role in my own contemplative practice. It helps me see reality from an angle that I hadn't quite noticed before. Clear enough to see, and yet cloudy enough to draw me closer, to engage it with all of my faculties, and a new perception of reality emerges. Poetry helps me drop into the depth of my being, into the depth of mystery. Here's a teaser of what is to come. This is Chris Dombrowski reading The Hunt, from his latest collection, Ragged Anthem. Okay, this is called The Hunt. The toothless milkmaid I'd mistakenly called Sir, upon whose land I'd asked to trespass, said her acres were mine. Hoarfrost quiet, the missions hidden in a long lake deep cloud. The flatheads blue, bending with a sense of ownership through the valley. A flush, explosion of snow above the rose hips, a long shot, mist. I stopped to say a few words to the roots of an old willow I'd met years ago, who was shy at first, what with my absence and all. We touched as the pup pointed a ghost of a partridge I once killed. A large covey's tracks led through Russian olive into bull thistles and horizon held ample light, my game bag, mere feathers. But if I left now, I could get Lily from preschool, just as the girl who told me her favorite color was aqua Doreen awoke from her nap. Heel, boy. A doleful look 
from the kennel dog. Towns plowed streets were bright with melt. And inside, she slept beneath a purple blanket, a plush black bear gripped in her left hand, and her mouth fit tight her right thumb. A lone girl on a fold-out mat on the classroom rug, the other kids gone home. A nobleman went into a far country to obtain for himself a kingdom and returned. Far from noble, I knelt before her and let my kingdom sleep a little while longer, then spoke softly, softly, to wake her from whose dream I could not say. And Jericho Brown reading Of My Fury from his latest collection, The Tradition. Of My Fury. I love a man that no could die, and not by way of illness, and not by his own hand, but because of the color of their hand and all his flawless skin. One joy in it is understanding he can hurt me, but won't. I thought by now I'd be unhappy, unconscious, next to the same mother so many nights in a row. He readies for bed right on the other side of my fury. But first, I make a braid of us. I don't sleep until I get what I want. I'm looking forward to bring these conversations and the poetry of Chris Dombrowski and Jericho Brown to your ears here the next few weeks.